Well, I'm here with uh, Billy Gilmore. He is the head of Primary Funds for Europe for Aberdeen Asset Management. Billy, thanks for joining me here at The Deal My Economy pleasure. UK. Really, I want to hit you up with probably the, the most significant question that we're asking from the tech space sector is that what does make the UK the attractive hub that it is at the moment? And probably more importantly, is that going to change post-Brexit? Yeah. Let me deal with the first part of your question <laughs> first of all. That's probably the, the slightly more straightforward one to, uh, to address, Martin. I think if you look at the UK, there's a confluence of factors that come together to, to make it that attractive hub for, for technology. There's a supply-demand interaction. And by that I mean, I think we've got very strong science and technology in the UK, coming from a variety of different starting points. I think we've got good entrepreneurial talent, and you mix those two together. And then you look at the other side of the equation, you know, where is the demand for that output? Well, at, at the moment at least, we, we see uh, London as being the financial services capital of Europe and one of the great financial services parts of the world. So you, you get the, uh, the large-scale banks, insurance companies, financial institutions who have a, an unsolved need, you might say, and I think that's where technology and, and fintech has a part to play. You know, we know a lot of these uh, large incumbent companies have legacy questions they need to address. Can they do that under their own steam or do they essentially have to buy in that, that talent, that expertise? And I think that's where the, the science that's pushing through the technology, the entrepreneurs come together to provide a solution to the establishment. What happens in the next uh, several years is, is really anyone's guess. Uh, I don't think we'd want to overly speculate on that today. I think though the financial services sector is just so important to the UK economy. It, it's hard for me as a Brit to think that that won't remain the case going forward and we really don't know at this stage what, what the full implications of Article 50 and access to the single market might mean for UK financial institutions. I'm sure there'll be some move to set up operations overseas, but I still think uh, that the UK technology sector, the, the fintech sector, will take advantage of that. You know, let, let's bear in mind that uh, technology is, is a portable uh, aspect of, of business, and entrepreneurs, by their nature, will, will go to where the opportunities are. So if uh, large-scale financial services companies leave the UK to, to set up headquarters elsewhere, I'm sure they'll still have very substantial UK operations and uh, the, the science base, the technology base of the UK will still be able to exploit that uh, from, from here. See, this brings us nicely to the second point, which is really about what keeps the innovative hub going. You have to have financial capital, you have to yep. have investment, you have to have human capital and skills, yep. and then you've got to have this friction-free access to markets abroad. Now, one of them we think is going to change. Yes. What's Brexit going to do to all three? Well, the funding question is, is absolutely fundamental yeah. in, in, in all of this. You know, if you look at where the money comes from, you know, to go into startups, it, it's from venture capital funds yeah. uh, in the main, and those have historically been supported in a, a very meaningful way by the European Investment Fund. That, that is the largest investor into to venture capital funds in, in the UK and across Europe. So. A big question for, for me, and I'm sure for many of the venture capital funds out there, is what will the ongoing role of the EIF be? Uh, the UK is the biggest market for, for private equity and venture capital in Europe. I don't necessarily see that changing post-Brexit. I think the EIF will continue to want to support startups, to want to support innovation, and indeed is raising new funds, is sponsoring new funds right now to, to get more money into the the startup community. So the question is, will the UK form part of the EIV's, EIFC universe going forward? Question, we don't know. I think institutions like the, the British Business Bank uh, have a role to play in, in terms of uh, sponsoring new initiatives. Mm. And I would have thought that in, in due course, government will, in the UK, will want to foster an innovation culture. So you know, there, there may be more finance to come from government agencies in, in, in times to come uh, to, to support uh, the capital side, then you've got the, the human talent, shall we say, the, the, the human capital. And <coughs> look, I, I think here entrepreneurs are, are, are pretty streetwise individuals. You know, they, they have to get the right talent in place and get that talent in place quickly to, to do what it is they're trying to achieve. So 
If there are restrictions on employment in the UK, perhaps, uh, or foreign nationals post-Brexit, I don't think it would be a surprise to see entrepreneurs in the UK setting up locations within the EU to take advantage of, of that talent and to be able to fulfil the demands of their customers from an alternative location. Uh, so that, that to me is, you know, if you like, is, is the essence of what entrepreneurs do. They, they navigate through different challenges and they come up with solutions. So I think, yes, there could be some short-term pressures, inability to get the right people in place at the right time, but I'm pretty confident in due course that uh, solutions will be found. The third part, the, the you know, what happens to the market and, and how is that accessed, I think it's sort of similar to, to, to part two of, of the question. Again, we are looking at uh, people here who can navigate through uncertain times and are adept at, at finding new ways of doing things. So if you need to attack the UK market, or the, the European market from outside the UK, again, that's something I would expect entrepreneurs to do. We've seen some very exam successful examples of European businesses go to the, to the US, go to China, because that's what you require to attack those markets. You don't necessarily do it from London. So it's, I think having the, the flexibility, not being too set in your ways, th these will be the uh, the components of how business is done in the post-Brexit environment. It's interesting because a lot of what you say brings us back to the government and what role they're going to play yeah. to support the sector and to enhance growth within it. We've heard their articulation about support for other sectors. Yeah. Are they being active enough, do you think, at the moment? And what role do they need to play to make sure that London maintains that status that it has, at least to date? Yeah. I think if we if we bring it specifically to, to FinTech, mm -hmm. you know, the, the, there is this uh, sort of project called Project Innovate, mm -hmm. uh, which is really a, a government initiative to make sure that uh, up-and-coming financial technologies can be looked at away from the r full regulatory spotlight. I, I think the government is doing what it can there to foster innovation because it, it does see innovation as very important for you know, the good health of financial services and, and technology in the UK and indeed for, for employment. So I think they understand that you can't take a, a sledgehammer to crack a nut. The, the, the regulation of a small fintech company is vastly different from the regulation of a large diversified financial services organisation. So I think that resonates with the current government. They, they understand the need to have a, a lighter touch approach and to encourage and to foster innovation. So I'm very hopeful that uh, that commercial, pragmatic approach will, will continue and that may, in fact, encourage you know, entrepreneurs from outside the UK to actually come to the UK in due course because they feel they're getting uh, more support from government, uh, perhaps a more understanding, uh, a more sympathetic approach to you know, their, their particular issues than one might get in a, a harsher regulatory environment. Yeah. Good point to leave it on. Billy, thank you very much for your time today. Billy Gilmore, Head thank of you. Primary Funds for Europe for Aberdeen Asset Management.